What up, everybody out there in the football world? We had what was probably the best week of college football yet this season, maybe for the season. And you're here with the TTT as we break down some of our favorite parts. That includes some ducks getting squashed, maybe a couple tigers getting their paws hurt. Alabama looking a little sketchy until halftime. <laughs> and the Big Ten absolutely wailing on each other. And he scores on the last play of the game. Touchdown! And Alabama wins! They talk about that ball. The Cubs and Nation forever. Are you ready? This is the Trash Talk Tailgate, and I am Riley Puddin' Peters, and with me as always, I've got Dr. Preston Rowe, defensive backs, quality control coach from Louisiana Tech University. Thank you for tuning in, and we're glad that we could take you through what was one exciting week of college football. Man. Dr. Preston, what was your favorite part of this uh, this exciting college football week? It's a tough one. I think the ending to the uh, Ohio State Notre Dame game, but with a walk off touchdown, yes, sir. That that was it for me. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, that's definitely we got more on that coming up soon, folks. Um, <laughs> yeah, and in this episode, we may even have. You know, some special guests, some talk over some certain games. But Ooh. you're going to have to get through the episode to see if that happens. So Ooh. watch the whole thing, please. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, man. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Just watch. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. Please. And keep commenting. You know, who knows? Maybe we do something like a comment of the week. You know, we get more people Ooh. commenting. Everybody likes to win something. Come exactly. <laughs> Riley definitely needs to win something right now. Riley had a bad weekend. I, I had a, <laughs> yeah, dude, I had a rough one, man. I didn't, I didn't win a thing. I literally <laughs> top to bottom, dude. Soup to nuts. <laughs> didn't win a goddamn thing this weekend. So, you know, help, help me squelch my tears and give us a few comments and maybe a subscribe. Make Absolutely. I need something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, let's, uh, you know, the first game for me has to be that Oregon Colorado matchup that was, you know, one of the more uh, highly touted matchups of the week. You know, we had number 19 versus number 10. Uh, it, it, was, it was a big um, moment. And, you know, someone that really, really thought about this moment was uh, Oregon head coach Dan Lanning. Yep. And he gave one hell of a pregame speech. Absolutely, um, he did. That was definitely, definitely aimed at a one Dion primetime Sanders. Exactly. Let's, uh, let's tune in. Rooted in substance, not flash. Rooted in substance. Today, we talk with our pads. You talk for your helmet, right? Every moment. The Cinderella story is over, man, right? They're fighting for clicks, we're fighting for wins. There's a difference, right? There's a difference, right? This game ain't gonna be played in Hollywood, it's gonna be played on the grass, right? It's gonna be played on the grass. Let's go. Rooted in, Rooted in substance. Rooted in substance. That's powerful. That's real powerful, man. That's like... The Cinderella story is over. Yeah. That's and, a, I mean, it it was, man. Yeah, I mean, 
even even midnight struck in the Cinderella story, and uh, in this case, it was it was Oregon that was midnight showing up in their uh, midnight black helmets and, and pants. Man, I you know, I feel like that might have been a choice. I don't know. You know, I'm not I'm not an equipment squad, but I feel like I feel like there was some intention to the midnight black. Yeah, probably. I, mean, I don't know, but. I mean, dude, Oregon, on the opening drive, they just went right down the field and they fucking scored just right away. I mean, dude, Dan Landing, he had his guys ready to go from jump. And you saw that in his pregame speech. Like, those those guys were absolutely fired up and ready to fucking go. I mean, dude, who wouldn't be? That, that was a great pregame speech. Yeah, man. I mean, the, we always talk – I mean, I always talk about how – Deion Sanders is like an absolute master of of a pregame speech, um, but Dan Landing he showed that even a master can get upshone. I mean, hey man, Dan Landing's no slouch. Like, put some respect on his name. He he worked under Nick Saban at Alabama and then Kirby Smart at Georgia. He was the he was Georgia's DC there for two national championships. So, you know. Uh, yeah, no. He's he a, he knows he coach. he knows how to coach football. He he's seen it from the best. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think this is a you know, this is a a a amazing coach versus an amazing. I mean, I don't even know how to put foot, like uh, Dion because you know Dan Landing is is a is a a coach. From like the top to the bottom, you know, like you said, he came from yeah. Nick Saban and Kirby Spart, like that coaching tree. Obviously, he's got some some goddamn chops. You know, you got to put the respect on his name, and, exactly. and he is a a coach. You know, like Dion, you know, was a superstar, was a player, was a personality, and is now a coach. Um, yes, you know, I think, and I think you kind of saw maybe that difference in this game here. You know. Um, this is the first time that this Colorado team really played a a dominant force of another team. I mean, number ten Oregon, they deserve the respect that needs to be put on their name. This team, exactly. is, this team is mean. I mean, I, I said this, you know, in, in some previous episodes, but I thought Colorado was was not going to win this game. I really didn't think they would have a chance to win this game just because. Dan Landing, like like I said, he came from Nick Saban. He came from Kirby Smart. He saw how they recruited, and he especially up front, like dude, Oregon. They are dominant in both trenches. Like they are dominant in the trenches on both sides of the ball. They have the bubs on both offense and defense. And Colorado, I mean, we saw it against Nebraska. We saw it even a little against TCU. They just they don't have the horses up front to compete with an elite, elite team like Oregon. And that was, you saw, that was the difference in the game. Shador really had no time to really throw. He was off all game. And I think the difference was just the big boys up front. Yeah, man. I mean, we're giving a, we're giving a big Riley's bub of the week to that difference maker of an Oregon front both sides. I mean, the offense and the defense, like you said, I mean, they were the difference. They will be the difference. Because I think, I mean, I think that that O and D line, I think it, when they come, when it comes time to, for it to be like a USC Oregon shootout, you know, maybe later in the season, um, you know, decide who's, who's the top of the Pac-12. I think that also, I mean, like you said, the Riley brothers, they're not, they're not bub friendly, you know. They Lincoln are not Riley. club friendly. Lincoln <laughs> Riley ain't a ain't a ain't a, a high quality bub supporter. So no, and that's why I think Colorado, as crazy as it sounds, I know USC has Caleb Williams. I think Colorado has a better chance to beat USC next week. Not only because they're at home, they're going to be in Boulder, but they just USC. They don't have the bubs up front. And yeah. Oregon does. And I think Colorado would be much better positioned to potentially win a shootout with USC 
than with Oregon. Yeah, for sure. And I think Colorado's got the secondary that could – I mean, I'm not going to say that Caleb Williams – Caleb Williams is an amazing talent, so I'm not going to say that they're going to shut him down, but I think they have a, a secondary that could cause him the kind of problems that they would need to take advantage of to actually beat them. That's fair. Because, I mean, I mean the other thing, just bodied him. You know, that was the, the other thing. thing. The other thing that we have to say about this game, he wouldn't have made, you know, a 42-6 to six difference, you know. But Travis Hunter didn't play in this game. Colorado's yep. superstar – you know, uh, fucking dual side of the ball athlete. I mean, he does everything, man. He's just, he's a Heisman Trophy contender in his own right, to be honest. But yeah. I, I, he he didn't play. We're not sure if he's going to play against, against USC. I'm sure, dude, after seeing this game, I'm sure he's just, he's just, yeah, just fucking I, fiending to get out there, man. Yeah, Back with his boys. As far as I'm, as far as I'm aware, I do not believe that he is going to be able to play next week. Um, that is, that is the that is the uh, you know the word on the street. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, man, this uh, man, this game was. I mean, this game was something else. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, Shador. 23 of 33, 159 yards, only had a touchdown pass, and that came, like, really just in garbage time, you know, uh, in in the fourth quarter. And Oregon, they basically – they just – they just suffocated Colorado. They couldn't really do anything. They struggled, like we said, you know, in the trenches on both sides of the ball. And whenever you don't – whenever your offensive line can't compete and hold up, it's going to be a rough day for your quarterback. And, you know, uh, Colorado, they, a lot of their offenses is predicated on throwing the ball downfield. And when you don't have those boys up front, man, you just, you can't, you can't hit those deep shots. You can't take advantage of, 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 of those, of those opportunities. And, you know, it all starts up front. Um, Dion said it after the game, you know, if you're going to take shots, take shots now because it's the worst I'm ever going to be here. You know, he is going to recruit those big boys. You, I, I guarantee you that. I mean, he's bringing And they Warren are going to be better. <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he brought in Warren Sapp. You know, Warren Sapp's going to be able to help him recruit big time. Uh, but, yeah, man, you know, yeah, right enough. now, Oregon, they're, they're just a better, more elite team. No, and it's because, sure. yeah. I think no, Oregon. I think Oregon could compete in the SEC this year, which is I, a I, fucking I, I statement. Agree. I agree. Oregon, honestly, bro, would Oregon beat Alabama right now? We'll talk about that later. But I mean, you know, I mean, you know, we're in this game. I, I think they could. I definitely think they could for sure. I mean, Alabama I think this year. Yeah, yeah, dude. I think. I think they could. I think they would have one hell of a game against Georgia. Yeah, man. I mean, I I don't know. About, I think Georgia would still win, but I think Georgia will. I think Georgia would end up bodying him at the end. But at the same time, of if if they got off to a like a roll on them, I Oregon. I mean, and then this is the this is the name of Oregon since they've been, you know, what we conceptualize them as now. You know, like ever since they've been flashy uniforms, they've been fast, spread, no huddle. Yeah, like. Just in your and, face, run it up, just run it up, run it up, keep it going. Like ever since they've been that, this is this this team right here is probably one of the better ones besides like you know the fucking Marcus Mariota days. Well, I mean, dude, like that that was the thing with Oregon. Like when they had Chip Kelly and they had you know Darren Thomas, Marcus Mariota, Michael James, Kenyon Barner, where they had all of those guys when they were just running up and down the field with the spread. The one thing that you that you said was, damn, they're really fast. They're really explosive. They get up and down the field, but they don't. They can't compete in the SEC because like, they they didn't have those big boys up front. Yeah. You know, Dan Lanning, he's done a great job of getting those guys, so they can compete with you know SEC programs. I mean, and with so they can take from. another step to being elite. You know. Honestly, that just kind of clicked in my fucking head. He's a fucking SEC coach. Of course the team 
Like, yeah. of course he did the one thing that this fucking squad needed. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Nah. So, this was a great game. Um, I mean, the fucking you know, highlights speak for themselves, but, I mean, there's really not much to say. Now, I will, I'm going to let you have your moment on this little clip right here that you, uh, you threw at me. I'm going to let the people listen I, to it. This pisses me off, man. Just play it, play it. Yep. Power five level. This is its first year. The three and one. We we can't sit up here and act like it's all doomed. It's over with. They'll never win another game. That's not true. They played against an Oregon team that is better. There's a better yeah. football yeah. team. Bowling Nicks played. And you yeah. mentioned Bowling Nicks played well. Mm-hmm. You know, you were you were talking about the 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 jealousy and the way picking yeah. these coaches and how Dion got there. This is interesting. You said that I didn't want to interrupt you. I wanted to let let you finish. So I spoke to somebody in the coaching fraternity right after the game. And they know some people that coach at Oregon. And they was telling me, they said, man, I've never heard from another assistant coach of how much information was being given to that staff Uh about, no, I'm just, I'm being real with it, about game planning Against Colorado, right? So they can beat them. Well, everybody that everybody was stacked. They was stacking. That, yeah. that, that's the reality of it. I ain't making this up. No. I ain't gonna disclose no names, but y'all know who I'm talking it, it, about if you watch it. So, right. no, you know, we um, don't. We don't. <laughs> Keyshawn, let me just say this. So, for those of you that don't know, this was this was undisputed a, a TV show on Fox. Oh, sorry, it, Riley. Yeah, there yeah, you go. I didn't realize it was still so, Nah, dude. Um, so for those of you that don't know, this is Undisputed uh, earlier today. And it's a TV show on um, Fox with Skip Bayless. And Shannon Sharp used to be on it. Now he's no longer with them. But Heshawn Johnson, former NFL player, uh, they were talking about Colorado. And he said that he knows people in the coaching circle and the coaching fraternity. That's really what it is. It's a fraternity. Um, I know a lot of people in this fraternity, obviously, and he was saying how basically he knows people and they were saying how, you know, a bunch of other people like on coaching staffs throughout the country were taking time out of their own game planning for their own opponents for their school and their program to go out of their way to help Oregon game plan for Colorado just because everyone in coaching hates Dion. This really pisses me off because if you know anything about coaching, and Riley, you know this, I mean, as well as anyone, when you're in season, there is, you barely have time for your own fucking family. Like, yeah. you're not going to go out of your way to take valuable game planning time from your opponent. When you have to win or else you're, you might get fired if you lose a certain, you know, if you lose in this profession, especially the level that I'm at and that we as coaches are at at the D1 level, if you lose, you're going to lose your job and you might not get another one. Yeah. So the fact that Keyshawn Johnson would go on national TV and be like, oh, well, th- these coaches, they, they took valuable time from their own game plan and went, you know, and contacted Oregon coaches to say, hey, this is how you beat Colorado. It's just disrespectful on so many levels. First of all, like we said, Dan Lanning, he coached in the SEC. He coached at Alabama under Nick Saban, coached at Georgia under Kirby Smart. Two of the most successful programs in recent, like, college football memory. Yeah. I'd throw Clemson up there as well, just to give you some flowers, Riley, because I know you need them. But I need a smile. Like, yeah, exactly. And um, he knows he's not stupid. He knows how to game plan for a team that has no offensive and defensive line. And you saw that. So for you to go on there and for you to go on national TV and be like, oh, well, these coaches, I'm not going to name their names, but there are coaches that are going out of their way to do this for Oregon. It's just, I just feel like it's completely disrespectful because 
coaches barely have time for their own family yeah. during the season. And they are, trust me, Riley, they are only focused on their opponent for their program that week. That's all any coach across the country is focused on. And then they go home. They spend some, like, they, I'll probably spend, like, you know, an hour or two with my family, you know, or coaches with their families. You pass the fuck out. You wake up at 5 a.m. and you do it all over again. Yep. So the fact that he would go on national TV and say something like that, I, I just find it incredibly disrespectful. Yeah, also, incredibly disrespectful. Also, the only teams that have played this Colorado team have lost. Yeah. And they haven't been exactly. that great of teams. No, so, they like, haven't. If they told me, like, even if those coaches were were giving advice, I think Dan Lanning was probably like taking it and going, okay, into the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, why didn't you do it then? If it fucking works, because clearly you it didn't work. Yeah. You know? So like fuck I mean, I just you know what I'm saying though? Like, no, I get like it. you 100%. get it. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, I just like you know, I get it. And I mean, I don't think yeah, I he he did lead off by saying, you know, I'm not trying to get any excuses and then gives like a direct excuse, but at the same time exactly. it's like it, it, it just it is what it it's, is. It man. just comes off as just sour and grapes, this, like oh this right here it, it, clips like this. This is why you should watch the TTT exactly. and not undisputed. Bro. If we could get more viewers than Undisputed, I would be very happy. Yeah, tell your Skip friends. Skip Bayless would try to cancel us, though. Probably. It'd probably <laughs> be pretty easy, too. I'd say some wild <laughs> shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on from these fools, and let's get to, a, uh, let's get to another game where we... Ooh. Like, old Miss, number 15 Old Miss number versus... For the first time in fucking since... I, I mean, it was like, what, 10 years that Alabama's not been in the top 10? Number 13, Alabama? Yeah. Um, like, yeah. I mean, we saw Alabama once again uh, look mortal. Um, absolutely, they did. I, I will say, um, you know, the second half was a far better football game than the first half was. You know, they they kind of ran away with it. In the in the second half, no, no, but, for sure. You know, they, they like it, they, Nick Saban definitely gave one hell of a halftime speech. <laughs> <laughs> that might have just been, "I will kick every single one of you off this football team." <laughs> Fucking think I won't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my god! Can you imagine if Nick Saban were to do what Dion did this off season? <laughs> <laughs> Nick Saban comes just, in, he's like. I packed my luggage, and it's Louie. Exactly. And just fucking kick off all of the four and five stars off Alabama and just go get more four and five stars. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Saban's almost starting to rely on the NIL of God himself. Oh, my God. Dude, shut <laughs> I mean, you know what? I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. That's all you can have. That's, that, that's all you have, Riley. I'll let you have it. I don't know, man. Do we have it? <laughs> I feel like the NIL of God went wide left, but <laughs> <laughs> bro, oh no, oh Jesus, <laughs> oh man, that's bro. what I was saying, dude. Anyways, we'll get to that later, folks. Back we will Alabama. absolutely. <laughs> <Back to Alabama>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it's just this game was one, and it was at Alabama. That was the one thing. It was like, in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, it, it was. It was. It felt weird watching Ole Miss of all fucking. I mean, get, granted, coming into the game, number fifteen, three and zero, but it's still Ole Miss and it's still Alabama. You know, you still it's it still, still feels weird when when they're yeah. doing shit like this. Um, and you know, like we said, I mean, the second half, it was just a different football game. You got some copious notes for this game? I do. I do. Um, so Jalen Miro, uh, Alabama's quarterback, he got he was benched last game for the USF game because of how he played uh, in the Texas game. 
he actually came out. He played a lot better. He was 17 of 21, so only four incompletions for 225 yards, uh, one touchdown, and a uh, and one interception. You know, he did have the one pick, um, but you'll take that if you're Alabama. Like the way that they've struggled to throw the ball recently, you'll take only four incompletions. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, they they were able to run the ball. <laughs> Actually, um, technically, it's only three incompletions. One of those was a pick. That's still oh, a completion to somebody. True. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 he did complete it just to the defense. Um, Jace McClellan, Alabama's running back, 17 carries, 105 yards, and a touchdown. That's that's positive to see if you're an Alabama fan. They were kind of able to run the ball there in the second half. I was about to say uh, in the second half, though, because in the first half, I mean, honestly, Ole Miss's defense – like their their front four penetration was looking real nasty there in the first half. Yes, it was. Um, I don't, you know, I, I don't know what the fucking. I really like the O. I sw- it was like, I mean, it was all the same dudes. He didn't take anybody out, but it was like almost five different guys on that Alabama offensive line in the second half. It was like they I went, mean, they went in the locker room and drank their grown man juice and came out different people. I don't know. I mean, Riley, you really, to me, you know what the difference was in this game? What? Um, so Alabama on third down, they were 6 of 13, little under 50%. You'll take that. You know, little under 50%, right under 50% on third downs. You'll take that as any program. Ole Miss, they were 3 of 14 on third down. That really was the difference. They just they, they, they couldn't sustain drives on third down. That's kind of you know their 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 defense was on the field a lot the second half, and Alabama they were kind of able to just kind of salt the game away. Yeah, you know so so that so three of thirteen three of fourteen on third down that's just that's just not going to cut it against Alabama. You got to be better than that. Yeah, I and here we we see uh, Jim Milrow take a big shot as he completes a touchdown pass. That was a scary moment for Alabama fans. I know that. It was. He was. He looked a little shaken there. Um, it looked like he. It looked like he fucked up his shoulder. Yeah, and I mean, it was. Yeah, it was one of those real, <laughs> real, real uh, hold your breath moments. Luckily, you know, the backup comes in, pulls off a little Houdini for the uh, for the two point. We move on. Yes. But overall, though, you got to give it to Old Miss. I mean, obviously, the second half was kind of terrible. But, uh, yeah, Jackson Dart didn't throw a touchdown, but he did throw an interception. You know, I really like this play, by the way. Yo, I do like, too. Like that was, yeah. I didn't see that one. This is the first time I saw that. That was kind of sick. Yeah, that was sick. Just hurry up to the line. Get every, Yeah, let's, let's run that back. Hurry up to the line. It's fourth and one. Make Alabama think you're just going to either quarterback sneak it or run it up the middle. Yeah, that is the nasty. Dude, the Eagles, the Eagles need to put this in their fucking playbook. Oh, dude. Imagine. Because, you know, <laughs> we'll get to this you know, in the NFL episode probably. I can't Absolutely. imagine they won't run a QB sneak. <laughs> it's like <laughs> one of their fucking best plays. But uh, this dude, if the Eagles put this in their playbook and actually hit it on somebody, especially in like a scenario like this, touchdown. Yeah. Touchdown. Because everyone, it's the unstoppable QB sneak and just throw this little yeah. wrinkle in there and they're fucking yeah. – there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. I mean, there's – dude, like, I mean, this isn't about the game at all, but, dude, just imagine DeAndre Swift on that pitch play. Mm. He takes As it a safely to the outside and up the fucking Exactly. <laughs> I didn't even think about that, bro. That's a great point. Holy dude, shit. I this is know. why you should hashtag hire the TTT. Real talk. Hashtag hire the TTT. <laughs> God. Mm. You know. Uh, yeah, man, but uh, you know, just to just kind of wrap this game up, um, Alabama definitely. I, I don't. It's it's weird, man. It seems like the perennial powerhouses of the past, you know, x amount of years, five years, whatever it is, seven years. Yeah, they just uh, they just look like uh, they're starting. They to They look robbed. mortal. Yeah, I mean. Um, you know, once again, and, we'll get to this game later, but, you know, Clemson doesn't look like the same team they've been. No. Alabama doesn't really look like the same team they've been. No. 
Ohio State, you know, even when, you know, this is going to be one of the next games we get to. We'll talk about this in a second. But even they, yes. you know, have have had a few moments in the past few weeks where they haven't really looked like the team that they have been. Um, and they're fucking, I mean, they're winning. <laughs> yeah. but uh, I mean, but, you know, it, but but on the flip side of that, you've got some other, you know, blue blood programs this year. Yeah, that typically haven't been as great, you know, like Texas. They went in and they beat Alabama. Texas, Texas yeah. looks good this year. Yeah. You know, is is Texas back? We 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 don't know. Is it the arch um, Manning effect? Who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> um, uh, I mean, uh, Georgia. I think Georgia is really. I mean, in the past four years, I think Georgia's have, the best program in college football right now. Yeah, yeah, they have. They have pretty much essentially cemented themselves as the top of the mountain. Um, And, you know, maybe there's empires always fall. You know, that's history. Yeah. Are we seeing a permanent shakeup of the top of of college football? I guess that's the question that that we should be asking ourselves as this season plays out. And as we watch teams like Alabama, watch teams like Clemson, um, watch teams like, uh, you know, Ohio State, like the Big Ten, just in general. Um, yeah, and see I mean, how that develops. I mean, you know, much also- to Riley's dis, much to Riley's dismay, you know, another kind of uh, traditional blue blood, if you will, in college football that's kind of been down for the better part of a decade. It, that that's kind of reemerging is Florida State. You know that they yeah. looked really good. We'll talk about the game later. Penn State's another one. Penn State. You know, that they had a really you know, they had a really great win against um Iowa and uh, we'll get there. But uh yeah. we'll, we'll get there. Penn State <laughs> I mean Penn State's definitely looking good. Um and speaking of it I <laughs> I will say this, Riley. We'll never count out a Nick Saban coach team. I'm no, just gonna leave never. that at that. Nick Saban no. is is one of the best and will continue to be one of the best no matter what their record looks like but Mm -hmm. something to think about yes so next game that we have um oh this is a fucking beat down hold on i guess we should say the final score of this game i mean it was just on the screen but 24 10 alabama does beat old miss um now now moving on (laughs) we (laughs) We, have we need to work on that we're not very good at that yeah it's all right you know we talk about the whole game we always get the final score we do and i hope you enjoy our breakdown of the whole game though (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> um, so this game, I a number twenty four Iowa comes into number seven Penn State. Um, they come into Happy Valley. Happy Valley called a whiteout, and oh. in my opinion, the whiteout is probably one of the hardest, um, one of the hardest places to play in college football. It's it's something different because it's. Whenever they do that, it just it feels different than a than a normal home game for them. Like I don't know what it is, just that that atmosphere that they create when when the whole stadium is just all you see is white shirts, white pom poms, people freaking out, everybody's yeah. loud. It it just it, it gives you chills, man. There's that that infamous it, clip of um, Michigan. <laughs> Michigan yes. getting the getting the uh, delay of game on the first play, like of the, the game first play of the game because of uh, uh, what was it? Uh, <laughs> Just how Mo loud is a Mo Bamba? Yeah, <laughs> that was what it yeah. Was. Was... <laughs> how loud that crowd gets. Yeah, I mean, so you know, you know <sighs> big test for um, Iowa on the road and it, Penn State. Penn State looks legit, man. I mean, they do. The Big uh, they, Twelve they, really got... wailed on really, really wailed on itself this week. I think that is something that we uh, that we got. The Big Twelve or the Big Ten? That's it. Oh, I meant to say the Big Ten. My fault. Yeah, yeah the Big Ten. I was like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hashtag CT. It's fine. I was trying not to cough through it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the big the Big Ten really fucking wailed on itself this week. I mean. Dude, like Drew Drew Aller, the, the the Penn State new starting quarterback this year. A lot of Penn State fans were really, really excited. He played really well. 25 of 37, 166 yards, four touchdowns, four passing touchdowns. And then on the flip side, the Iowa quarterback, Cade McNamara, five of 14, 
for 42 yards. Like, those are exact yeah. Wilson numbers. Dude, that's – I don't even – I can't – I don't even think you could say that, dog. I don't know what that is. That's fucking <laughs> – like, By the way, this I punt mean, right here – What punt? This, this right here. Look. I mean – Oh, no. You can't. That's just so unfortunate, bro. That's why you have to have the Peter call. I mean, that that's not even a Peter, dude. It hit him oh. as it was coming down. You can't even – that's not even a Peter. That's just <laughs> that's just the best punt I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that is probably the greatest punt I think I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, yeah, dude. So we, we said that Cade McNair had just insanely bad stats this game. You know what might be even crazier, Riley? <laughs> Fucking Iowa... For, for all their talk about, you know, fire their OC, Brian uh, Ferentz, Iowa fans fucking despise him. And for good reason. They had 76 total yards of offense this game. If you're going to go into Happy yeah. Valley and try to beat the number seven ranked team in a whiteout, you've got to do more offensively. That is just you've unacceptable. Got to be so much more offensively. You've got to be got so to... much more. I was trying to put it nicely. You've got to like, quadruple the numbers at least. I mean, I want to. I, I, I should have done a little bit of research before this episode. I got. I want to see what the numbers <laughs> it takes to beat Penn State in a wideout because you got to. It's, it's be hard, crazy. man. I mean, it, it's always a night game. Like I know Michigan and Ohio State people. That told me, like, oh, I, I really hope we're not the whiteout this year. I really hope we're not the whiteout this year. And, yeah. like, because it, it's hard to go into Penn State and beat them in the whiteout. You've got to be on your A game. And, obviously, Iowa offensively was not. I mean, dude, this is insane. 76 total yards. Penn State had 215 rushing yards. Just rushing yards. Yeah, they dude. had 397 total and like I said, Drew Aller, he threw four touchdowns. Just yeah. terrible offensively. I mean, Penn State's <laughs> Penn State's O line has been pretty legit this year. I gotta say, man. They and look I mean, Riley, would you say that they look like the best team? I know Ohio State just beat Notre Dame, but Penn State looks like they could win the Big Ten this year. I I Penn State and Iowa State, if that game happens will be... Ohio uh, State? Yeah. Is that not what I said? I meant to say Ohio State. You said Iowa State. <laughs> Sorry, boy. I, everybody, I'm coming off of the back end of the cold, so I'm a little fucking... Anyways. Uh, Penn Hashtag State, CTE. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Penn State, Ohio State. That game will be an amazing game if we get to see it. Yeah. Um, hang on. Hang on. Where, where is that game? Let me see. If it's if it's the matchup of juggernauts, you know, if it's if it's undefeated it's when it comes to it, that game's gonna be amazing. I mean let's see. Do they play in the regular season this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they always play. Oh yeah. They're, in the, they're in the same division. division. Let me let me yeah. let me see. I'm just trying to figure out because I don't know. I should know this. No, um, you could figure it out while you do it. But yeah, no, this O line, man, the, the Penn State O line is Definitely pretty legit. Um, Iowa's yeah. Iowa's known for their defense. Like they're the number they're the number twenty four team in the nation on the back of their defense. Um, you know, uh, like like Preston said, everybody, all the fans of that you know of that program, all the critics of that program, have been calling for the firing of the OC for uh, a while now. Two years now. Two yeah. three years. <laughs> and, uh, and he actually. Riley, did you know this? So this offseason, like not to cut you off, but this offseason, Iowa, uh, so Iowa, the, the offensive coordinator is the son of the head coach, uh, Brian Ferentz is Kirk Ferentz's son. So Iowa fans are screaming nepotism. So um, Iowa, they, they put in a new like clause in his contract this year saying he has to score at least 25 points a game to keep his job. And uh, so far, it's not looking good. <laughs> yeah, but so did you yeah, know that? I did not know that. That's fucking. Isn't that funny? That's 
Yo, that's how you. Ah, that is nepotism, dude. That's <laughs> nepotism, gets, and especially in modern co- college football, for like how hard twenty five is not that much, man. Yeah, twenty five is not that much, but the fact that like in modern college football, like just the way that the turn, the coaching turnaround is, like how quick yeah. teams are are willing, especially OCs and DCs. Like, yeah. they will. I feel like most schools will just if you're not performing in one year, they'll fucking kick you to the curb like you're a goddamn hot trash. But <laughs> keeping around a dude that people have been wanting gone for years and then yeah. like putting a clause in his contract to like, you yeah. know, if that's like, yeah, no, that's that's nepotism, dog. <laughs> yeah, Dad's trying absolutely. to keep his son in there and fucking son is not doing it. Yeah. But Riley, t- just just to answer your question. Um, Penn State travels to Ohio State this year. What, uh, so, what week? Uh, October 21st. Oh shit! I don't know. Nice. It. That's like so, three weeks, four weeks now. About yeah. three weeks. So about a month. About a month. Yeah. So that's gonna be like what, like week eight or something? Yeah, something. Like I that. think. Yeah. Something in that ballpark. This was week four. We will. We will definitely talk about that game oh, yeah. when we'll it be happens. Talking about it, and that's gonna be a good yeah. one. Um, in Ohio State, I think I might have to give Ohio State that one because you can't. I agree. You can't lie about you know fucking. The, the horseshoe is a fucking that's a formidable place to play as well um so yeah, yeah I, that is what well, it is. well here's my question riley is lou holtz going to be there and is he gonna pick penn state <laughs> i fucking i hope lou holtz doesn't pick uh, like i think he i hope he should picks against ohio state <laughs> until he dies which is no. probably gonna be in about a year or two <laughs> Dude, I, Holtz, I would just i would do that i would just fuck with ryan day until i die i wish you could do a good oh, Holtz no. impression. He's like, he's, i mean they, we're getting way off topic here but like brian day he's like bro i want to know where lou holtz is right now it's like bro it's one o'clock in the morning he's fucking asleep he's 86 years old why the fuck are you yelling yeah dude He's been asleep <laughs> since 5 p.m. Dude, leave him alone. Exactly. He's gonna wake up soon. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, bro, what the fuck um, are you doing? All right. Um. Anyway, god dang. Yeah. Any any, uh, uh, any last things for this uh this Penn State Iowa game? I feel so bad. I mean, Iowa. They've all they always have a great defense. Phil Parker is one of the best defensive coordinators in the country. And I just feel bad for Iowa, man. If they had any semblance of an offense, like, and I feel your pain as a longtime Virginia Tech fan. Like, if you had any semblance of an offense, Iowa would compete regularly for the Big Ten. But their offense is just such fucking dog shit yeah. that it just can't can't do it. Yeah, the thirty-one to nothing is the final score of that game. And it yes. looks like that's gonna really hurt that twenty-five points again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So next game, the one that we've all been waiting for at least this up to was, this point. We got this Ohio was the State game of the game. week, and it did not disappoint. No, it did not. It did not. Oh disappoint. God, it was so good. So um, good. Yeah, this was a great game. Uh, oh man, I missed a joke. I missed a joke during the Oregon game. Shit. About what? About Bo Nix graduating high school with us. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he played he I I was gonna say this too, Bo like we're off topic, but I saw this thing yesterday that Bo Nix played I watched this game. It was Auburn, Oregon. Yep. Bo Nix played against Justin Herbert. Yeah. In yeah. college. Yeah. Justin Herbert's been in the NFL for four years now. Yeah. It's like, like, what the fuck? Yeah, no. But uh anyways. Fans and new sets and Bennett. Back to uh back to this game though. Ohio State, Notre Dame. God. The most anticipated kickoff of the week. It was uh it was the uh game day game. Um, you know, that's where we get the Lou Holtz so talking <laughs> talking shit to Ryan Day. Uh, <laughs> or Ryan Day talking shit about Lou Holtz, which you know, probably a little bit of All he said was that Ohio State's not physical, and that's true. Yeah, Ohio State comparatively to like some of their other teams, yeah. Yeah. Bro, you haven't beat Michigan. You haven't beat Georgia. You're not as physical as them. You know? And I mean anyway. Yeah, they look like children when they play the SEC. That's the thing that always gets me about the Big Ten. 
<laughs> it's like every time it doesn't matter who it is they always end up looking like fucking kids when they play alabama or georgia yep. or someone to that caliber well, which is why Dan Lanning went and recruited all the big boys to Oregon. Yep. But uh, anyways. He knows you have to be physical to win. Riley, Riley, you and me agree on this j- just real quick. What is the key to winning football games long term? To have a sustainable, successful program? <clears throat> the trenches. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. That, that's the simple answer, dude. It's, it's, you can it's have, the simple answer. As long as you have a running back that's got two feet that he can put in front of each other consistently, <laughs> if you've got big dudes up front that can create space, you can, you can three yards in a cloud of dust anybody. Exactly. That's just a fact. I mean, and this, it is a fact. It, people forget about that because the, the football that we see these days in college and in the NFL is so flashy, it's so quick, it's explosive. It's, it's fucking big plays. Um, but at the end of the day, if you've got an O line that is that is tough and that can that has stamina and that has like resilience, you can just grind out anyone. Like that is that is the most unstoppable because if the team is just three yards in a cloud of dusting you you've got nothing to do but sit there and take it exactly but uh like yeah yeah, i mean that's just that's just what it is so that's just football man football is gonna change but that will never change no yeah they just can't it can't like it's just it's the nature of people as much as it's the nature of the game if you just get your if you have guys that line up and hit the other team fucking 30 plays a game, like, you're, you're not going to like it. <laughs> you're not going <laughs> to have a fun time. No, you're not. All right, man. Um, well, back to this game, though. Do you, have, uh, yeah. <laughs> do you have some copious notes for us? I do. I do have some hashtag copious notes. Uh, so Kyle McCord, Ohio State fans, uh, kind of – Questioning whether or not he could be the guy at Ohio State. He didn't play bad. He didn't play great. I mean, 21 of 37, 240 yards, didn't throw a touchdown, but he also didn't turn the ball over, which is key. You can't go in. You can't expect to win if you turn the ball over in a hostile environment on the road. Um, You know, Sam Hartman, Notre Dame's transfer quarterback uh, from Wake Forest, 17 of 25, 175 yards and a touchdown. He looked really good this game. Um, I thought he played better than Kyle McCord did. Uh, you know, obviously Notre Dame lost. But uh, Travion Henderson, Ohio State running back, 14 carries, 104 yards and a touchdown. A Mecca Abuka. No, that's uh, the one I need to just- laugh at. <laughs> the Emeka Abuka uh, touchdown. That's the one we got to laugh at. Yeah. Um, Emeka Abuka, seven catches for 96 yards. Just one of many five star Ohio State wide receivers. Just fucking ridiculous. I mean, Brian Hartline's one of the best recruiters in the country. He's, for those of you that don't know, he's the Ohio State wide receiver coach. God, that man knows how to fucking recruit wide receivers. It's ridiculous. Um, but, uh, honestly, man, my takeaway this game, I mean, we'll, we'll see it in the highlights, but Notre Dame, Notre Dame gave this game away at the end. We'll go straight to by it. Just I'll, I'll go right to it. Or coaching, you know, Notre Dame absolutely blew this game at the end as a, as a coach watching this game, Bam. it was infuriating. All right. Okay, no, so so back up, back up, back up. Not not this. Oh. I don't know if they're in there. You want to go straight to it? What do you want? No, no, no. I I wanted I want to do the Notre Dame drive before that. Okay. Um yeah. When when they could have just fucking killed the clock. No, that's the pun. Let's keep going. Just run it. We'll get there. Yep. 
right, see, so this is, I mean, this is touchdown. The drop before. Yeah. yeah, you know, so Notre Dame, they go up 14 to 10 you know, uh, late in the fourth quarter. And Notre Dame, they're able to really, I mean, dude, they, they stopped Ohio State's offense all game. You know, I mean, that is a, uh, that's a chunk play. That's a huge. That's a huge play right there for Ohio State. Third and one. Ohio State does not get it. They run a jet sweep into the boundary. That's that's the first coaching decision. Why you run a jet sweep into the boundary to get, dude? It's fourth and inches. I gotta say, if they didn't win this game, already we talk about how much hate Ryan Day gets, dude. Yeah. If they lost this game, <laughs> imagine how much shit he would have caught for the like pinnacle play being a jet sweep into the boundary. A jet sweep into the fucking boundary, man, dude. Dude, just run the ball. Like, not don't don't get fancy. Okay, okay. So Riley, run this back. Yeah. This is this is this is just one of the many gripes I have with the ending of this game. In terms of coaching. So they're able to get the fourth down start. Okay, so pause it. Yep. So it is there's two minutes left. There's two minutes and thirty-four seconds left. Um it's first and ten. Notre Dame is up fourteen to ten. All you have to do, and um uh Riley, if you notice, Ohio State has one timeout left. Yep. Or do they have one or oh, two? No, that's two. Yeah, that, two. It, that's two. But but they call one right here. So Notre Dame, they had just ran the ball for a first down on the previous play. They threw an incomplete pass. Like, dude, just run the ball. Yeah. And then they're forced to punt that. They're forced to punt um, and give Ohio State the ball back, you know. With a minute and 36 seconds. Well, that's when. With a minute and 36 seconds left. Ohio State, they have one timeout left, you know. And then Ohio State, they're able to drive the ball. So now go. Third and ten. This play was huge. Yeah, it's a fucking... It's like... Yeah. That's Emeka Ibuka. And then here we are. So it's third and goal. Give him There's three seconds left. Boom. Riley, how many people does Notre Dame have on this field right now? <laughs> Let's, Let's count, count them out. Shall we? One. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Two. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Three, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, four, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, five, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ah, uh, ah, uh, ten. Uh, uh. Oh, oh and no! There's just so this is something I saw. Um, not only are they a man down, they're a lineman down. So yeah, <laughs> let's just call it two men because everyone knows we're big as shit. Absolutely, <laughs> and. And Especially in a third and goal situation to win the game, dude. Okay, I played left tackle. Uh, and <laughs> as as the left tackle, this dude right here is like, what the fuck is happening? Are they? Is this? Is this? Are they? What? <laughs> His mind is blown right now, dude. You know, he's like, no, really? This is what? But so obviously, there's the gap here. And yes, I, I do appreciate you know guys wanting like doing their job, but at the same time, when your team fucks up as bad as not lining a dude up, dude, this is to win the game. Fucking, this is, yeah, this. Dude, there's three seconds left. Like, yeah, they're they're gonna run the ball. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's, it's eleven on ten. This this dude right here, these two guys right here, somebody, somebody needs to like just see that there is a guy missing and fill that <laughs> gap. Yeah, so fill the gap. Help, yes. Hell, when when something like this happens, and 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 you know, fucking a mistake this bad is in the moment. You gotta realize, and even if your man, team is down a man. Be that man. But instead, they don't. Like, they just let it happen. This dude doesn't even take a f aggressive step. No. He is, he is getting hit where he started. Yeah. Like, look at that. Number two yeah. is trying, but everyone knows 
especially in third and goal, you're not reaching the guy from the edge. That's just not. I mean, right. he's got edge contained, so he's doing his job. But like, but the again, fact that there's nobody yeah. in the interior in that hole yep. means that his job needed. The to linemen change. are just going to be like, dude, like, like you know, combo box. Like, you know, get up to the D lineman, yeah. you know, and then go up to the linebacker. There's no D lineman, so they just go straight to the backer. And this, look at this fucking middle linebacker here, dude. Yeah. And, you know, I understand the dangers of RPO and yada, 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 yada. But just, I need someone to to just fucking fill a hole. I need it. I really need this middle linebacker here. I mean, this guy right here, I need him to just, just hit right here. Because these dudes are all a little small. You know, I, I understand them being a little hesitant about lining up against the left tackle. I mean, they're probably going to get blown up. But like, this, let's be real. But this guy right yeah. here, he needs to be sticking. Right in this moment, the fact exactly. that he is still, I mean, there is two yards in between him and the play. Yeah, he, dude. He needs to be sticking and hitting. You've got to be fucking shooting that motherfucker. Like, that is desperation, and you just... You yeah. don't fucking do it. Now, I'm not going to put it on the – I mean, dude, you can't put no. it on the players. You can't. They still, no, no, no. It's not – it is this not is, truly their fault. But at the same no. time, if a mistake – shit happens. That is it. In sports, yes. in life, it's a fact. Shit happens. And when shit happens, you've got to be able to clean it up. <laughs> that is what makes <laughs> – Yeah, man. That is the difference between good and great. And at the end of the day – Notre Dame is good. I mean, but dude, like, like we said, man, like that's on coaching. No, for sure. If, and that's what I'm saying. So, like, it's the difference between good and great. All of these, all of yeah. these problems, the fucking linemen missing everything. It's the difference between good and great, and it's why yes. Notre Dame is just good. I mean, dude, and and so after the game, Marcus Freeman was asked about this play because there's ten guys on the field. In the most critical play of the game, there's 10 guys on the field. And Marcus Freeman was asked about it, and he gave the most mind-blowing response. Like, honestly, I would rather you say, like, yeah, we we fucked up, we didn't realize it. I would rather you say that. But this is what he said. I told him just stay off because we can't we can't afford a penalty. I didn't have any timeouts, right? So we couldn't afford a penalty there. Um, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's on us. It's got to be better. Before, no. I mean, so he, his quote is, "I we can't afford a penalty there," and like, I told him to stay off. Yeah, I told him to stay off. We can't afford a penalty there. And let's think about the situation again. There's three seconds left. Third yes. and goal. You know, when it when it first hit my mind, you know, I'm like, okay, I understand. But then, you know, when you dive deeper into the situation, you you realize it doesn't fucking matter. No, you would so much. I would so much rather have an extra defensive lineman than a yard. <laughs> exactly. Well, like, dude, because like, so let's just say that he tells the D lineman to fucking go. Like and the D line is gonna haul ass, right? What's Ohio State gonna do? They're gonna snap the ball. Yep. Because you know they're, they're absolutely gonna snap the ball. It's gonna be a dead play because it's gonna be a penalty, right? Yep. But at least if you're Notre Dame, now you've given yourself a chance. Now you're gonna have you're you're gonna be able to huddle. You know you're gonna be able to get the right play call in, and you're gonna have eleven guys on the fucking field. Absolutely. Like, dude, you, you've just you've you've just willingly handicapped yourself. Yep. That's what they did. <sighs> it, it doesn't make any sense to me, man. Like Riley, like, Riley. Like, I'm sorry. Th- this is probably speaking a little too harshly. This is the kind of decision that makes a team question the head coach. Yeah, I mean. It's, it is definitely the difference between good and great. And if you're a school like Notre Dame that expects greatness and you're only getting goodness, 
these are the, the decisions that you look back on to, to answer the question of why. Just why? I mean, it's, it's hard to feel bad for Marcus Freeman in, in this press conference just because, bro, like th- this was on you. The, no, like, dude, you the fact that you willingly told – dude, what's going on? What's, dude, if you're that D lineman who was fucked up and accidentally was on the sidelines when he's supposed to be on the field, and you know it, your head coach knows it, and the game is on the line. They're about, you know, and you're and and you're like, coach, like I, I need to go in. What's going through your mind if your head coach says no, stay, stay on the sideline? I gotta be honest, as a defensive lineman, I probably would have just ran on. Exactly. I just I again like this is the kind of decision. Not saying it's going to happen. I think Marcus Freeman is a really good coach, but yeah. No, this is definitely some shit. It, you, I bet you won't happen twice. No, At least you like, hope not. I, <laughs> Fucking, you hope not. If it does happen twice, the locker room is they're going to start to look sideways. Like, bro, really? Like, really? That, <laughs> that twice you know, the like, same guy, the same both times. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, like, dude. All you, if you're Notre Dame in that situation, all you want is just a chance. And Marcus Freeman did not give his team a chance in that situation. Mm. Um, it's also really funny, Riley, because a lot of people think this is the best Notre Dame team since 2005, when uh, USC, who eventually went on to play in the national championship um, game, they lost to Texas that year. But USC, remember the Bush push, <laughs> like. Yeah, and, like, USC beat Notre Dame in South Bend on a walk-off Matt Liner quarterback sneak, basically losing in the exact same fashion. <laughs> Dude, the scriptwriters hate Notre Dame. All right, folks, it's time for the game of the week, at least for us here at the TTT, and that's an absolute fact. And just because... It is the most immortal rivalry in history, being Clemson and Florida State. We had to bring on the copious mind himself, a.k.a. Jay Sean the Dawn. What's up, buddy? What's going on, guys? What's up? Yeah, man. Listen, you're lucky you're here to talk shit to me. But, you know, the game, this was, this was, it was a great game. It broke my heart into a million pieces. Uh, God damn it! God's God's name, image, and like likeness left us wide left, and, and and my heart is still on the streets of Charleston bleeding. Um, man, oh man! But but man, I mean the game the game lived up to the hype that it that it was uh that it was given leading leading up to it. Absolutely, yeah, man. Yep. So uh. Preston, you said you had one one thing. I know you said you were going to kind of let us run this one, but you you had oh, something. Oh, absolutely, bro. I just well, I'll, I'll point it out uh, once once we get to the play. But I mean, I'll just, bro. Keon Coleman, Florida State's transfer wide receiver from Michigan State, one of the best receivers in the country. I mean, bro, it just show it just goes to show you, Riley, that the portal is legit. The portal is how. You recruit now. It is a huge part of recruiting. And if Clemson is not going to embrace that, and if Dabo's not going to embrace that, then y'all are going to get left behind. Yeah. I mean, you, dude, Keon Coleman would have been huge for y'all because y'all's receivers, you know this better than anyone, yeah. cannot get separation and cannot win 50 50 balls downfield. Yeah, we've got one. One receiver that I really like, and that's it. And that's Bo Collins, who, for some fucking reason, we just don't target. I don't know what it is. I, I just, it's like, it's like they refuse. It's like Garrett Riley refuses to like, uh, bring him into our offense. It's, uh, it's this little thing I like to call quarterback play. <laughs> no, listen, fucking, don't get me started on that, too. Fucking, I mean, I will say, you know, before we shit on Cade Club, Nick. 25 for 38 for 283, one touchdown. Um, no interceptions. Did have the absolute heartbreaker of a strip sack, um, which he wasn't even. That changed even the game, man. That changed I mean, the game. Yeah, no, it, it was it was the reason. 
It was the Florida reason. Florida State still running that one back. Yeah, dude. I mean, <laughs> that dude is still running wide open. I hey. think. Yeah, I'll, I'll give I'll give Club Nick his credit where he's due though. He 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 ran down the field to try to make the tackle and then got obliterated. <laughs> no, <I'm gonna laughs> go when we watch that, when we when that play comes up, oh we'll, we'll fucking why? Because he really does. He runs his little fucking heart down there. He runs his little Texas heart down there, and he just fucking misses. I don't even think he doesn't even really get obliterated. He he just misses. <laughs> he jumps in front of nah, him. man. I was you know watching just, it last yeah. night. <laughs> you know who just missed on that play, Riley? Uh, the the him K Klubnik didn't see the dude come. The offensive line no, didn't bro, see the That's not on Cade. That's on Mafa. That's on the running back, bro. You you gotta pick that up. Well, I mean, a perfectly executed corner blitz is impossible to block. I was about to say, I, honestly, I, I we gotta watch it back. I don't know if the running back's even there. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's just him. I mean, I mean Dabo, Dabo called him out post game. Dabo said, "Yeah, Mafa's got to make that block." Um, That's all my well then he was he was in a terrible position because I, I honestly don't even he was definitely engaged with someone somewhere dumb then. But he free released, if I remember correctly. He I just think so he free- I think he just went out into the flat, if I'm not mistaking. Um, yeah, but Brady, you problem. gotta pick that up, bro. I, like I, mean, I said there, that, there's perfect- that man, Keon Coleman. Yeah, he yeah, that was a great play. Uh but that corner blitz was fucking oh. sick. I mean, I, I had to watch it twice to to see like what happened. He didn't he didn't show it early. That was the best part about it, dude. He didn't yeah. show it. He didn't. I mean, he came late for a corner blitz. He came pretty fucking late. Like he, he it was it was one of the best I've ever seen. Nah, for sure. Like, I mean, no no doubts about it. That was that was an amazing corner blitz. You got to give him the credit where the credit's due. Uh, man, Shipley, dude, Will Shipley played his dude, ass off. Shipley. Shipley? Yeah, feed that man. I'm, dude. <laughs> listen, me, me and Preston were talking about it, but like, the thing that made me so fucking mad, especially at the end of the game, the last couple drives, and and in the overtime drive, is like, Garrett Riley was just getting so cute, and and like Will Shipley was having a game. Phil Moffa was having a game. Phil Moffa, ten yards or ten carries for sixty nine yards. Will Shipley, 18 carries for 67 yards, a touchdown, four receptions for 38 yards and a touchdown. The whole team, we only had one turnover, which is that godforsaken strip sack that we're talking about. <laughs> I mean, like I mean, you're also letting QB sneaks get in from the from the two-yard line. I mean, yeah, look at that game. Look at his fucking back on this one. We might as well have just only had 10 guys on the field. <laughs> I mean, what happened to playing to the whistle? Look at the corner. Look at the corner. He's just hanging out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Honestly, the, it's bad. Like, just, just off of that, I understand what the corner was doing. Because I swear to God, even in my mind, I was like, is this about to be a trick play? Is he about to stand up and throw this? Just because of how weird it was. <laughs> I was like, yeah. huh? Yeah, no, that was a weird That was a weird QB sneak, though. It was. But, Johnny Wilson's coming on strong now. Dude, he had a rough Wilson, start to the season. Yeah, he had, I mean... Keon Coleman is going to get a lot of the credit from this game, but Johnny Wilson was y'all's leading receiver besides touchdowns. We're, 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 they're going to show his his catch later in the game. It was a very nice hands catch. Yeah. I mean, it was it was impeccable. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, man, this game, I I really I like the way that Clemson came out. Um, we just we let too much happen. It's that's just the fact. Yeah, I mean. Like, the thing is, you guys are still going to be competitive in, in the ACC, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, as much as I love my Knowles, I can't count on them to not, to not drop the ball at some point. Yeah, Bro, especially yo, after yo, this I'm game. Like, see the week before. Yeah. Look at, look, look. Feed, you should have been feeding this man. Dude. What, like, we had, we had a third and two. Hey. Uh, no, we had a third and one that we threw an outside screen on. Okay, man, look, <laughs> then, that's the most aggressive white boy I've seen run the ball since Toby Gerhardt. <laughs> maybe hey, since my take head, it, since all Scott himself. <laughs> take it from me, bro. I've actually had to coach against this man. He is the real fucking deal. I believe it. Nah, ship <laughs> ship is a ship is a, a a CMC carbon copy. I swear. Is, I, don't think, uh, I think he's a little bit more physical than CMC. Yeah, he's definitely. I mean, oh, here we go. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, we, 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 run that back. 
we got it. We 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 his eyes are in the backfield, but he's he's not showing. I don't even like honestly like he did a great. Hey, this is such a great. Just you know what's crazy ball. though? Like wait, run it back, oh. bro. I just realized something because I, I I didn't realize this when I first watched it, bro. That ball is in the middle of the field, and they ran a corner blitz. Typically, yeah. you run that play. If it's like hard into the boundary, you know what I mean? Yeah, you give yeah, them, I, yeah, you don't let them have the space. I mean, well, yeah. and that's partially on the quarterback, too. You got to know your height. I mean, also, got to get rid of We it. ran, we ran the, I mean, for me, the worst routes, but for this blitz, the best routes. Yes. We, we ran, I mean, this wasn't a quick play that we were not, that we were drawing up here. So, like, yeah, there you go. This is what you fucking get. <laughs> But it's also it's second and ten. This this was this was a great call. I got to give the D, the Florida State DC all the credit in the world for this call. This was I mean, and that's why you play. don't over that's why you don't over call this play because when you do call it, it it's it's the uh, the flea flicker of the defense, if you will. Like yeah. when they don't see it coming, execute it perfectly. You'll catch the offense with his pants down every time. Well, as a defensive coach, whenever you blitz, it's going to be a big play for someone. Exactly. You know, and um. But look look at the look at the score, guys. I just want to point this out. Clemson is up by a touchdown. They're driving. They're in Florida State's, you know, territory. They're on the fucking thirty one yard line. Bro, like I mean, this that's the twenty nine, buddy. You got that flip. Got your heel flipped. <laughs> Turnovers yeah. change the game, man. Every time. Every oh yeah, every they time. Do. There's nothing there's nothing that'll ruin a fucking a great possession or a great game like a like fucking turnover on a good possession. All right, now this roll the clip. Ballsy call, now, man. Now, yeah, we're about to roll that beautiful bean footage. I'm going to give it a couple <laughs> extra seconds just so I can roll into it. There we go. Great run by Phil Moffa, by the way. That's like a – he cut like a 40-yarder right there. He's just got to hold on to the ball, man. See, he free releases. Yeah. All right, now now run that back ever so slightly. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, hold wait. On. Wait for hold it. On. Wait for <laughs> it. See, he doesn't even get destroyed. He just misses. He just fucking missed. He just, <laughs> he just missed. He was like, he I wasn't really trying, though. I mean, he like ran his ass point. down there. Like, yeah. he was trying enough was to tr- run down there. He ran down he there so he there. wouldn't get he cussed out on film. That's what Exactly. That Fair. Fair. All right, yeah. what you want me to pause? <laughs> All right, keep going. All right. So watch Stop. the tail of He free releases. Bro, that's you. If you're hot. At the bottom of the screen, the slot receiver is open right now. Guess who it is? Yeah. It's Bo Collins. It's the guy we're talking about we don't throw the ball to. It's, it's literally my man's number 80 my right there. My thing is, what is Klubnik looking at? Because everything on his left Yo, he, is covered. He literally didn't look at – like, hold on. Watch watch him this entire time. I, was, I watched this about four times the other night, and I swear to God, he does not one time turn his head to where this pressure actually comes from. He, watches, well, look, he looks at everything but where the pressure came from. Well, look, I mean, he, he's basically like they're, they're taking a shot here, yeah. and he's looking for the shot. So run it. But it's yeah. not there. You got well, no, I, I mean, the, the receiver has a step at the last second. Run yeah. it. But I, I, guess, I guess my point is he doesn't do any check to the other side. I'm about to run it. But no. I, I guess my point is he literally doesn't do – he doesn't even do a safety check to the other side to make sure he's not, like, in danger. That's the thing that made me mad. Yeah. Because he would have seen this if you'd have just looked. So run it. Yep. All right. So right there. Stop. Oh. oh. The <laughs> thing is, as soon as he gets to the top of his drop, boom. Left top side of the field or the left side, I guess, whichever way you're looking at it. He's got three on two, so he's got two receivers against three DBs. He should have came off it right there. Yeah. Oh, look, look, look up top. Look at the Clemson receiver way up top. He's got a step. He does. He's got the step there. And if you watch the safeties, they're playing cover three, so the safety's in the middle of the field. He's not going to be able to make that play if it's a good ball. But the thing is, either way, he's got to let it go. He yeah, does. He just needed to let it go. I mean, that's the thing. He I mean, he just needs – and and he's got I have like a few more games of me being able to use this fucking excuse – but like he's just he's just so young. Like with that kind of shit. It's the thing I mean, that makes me so fucking mad. Uh, 
Trevor Lawrence makes that throw. Oh, yeah. He does. He but Sunshine's throw. different. Everyone Taj Boyd makes, makes that, that throw. throw. I mean, listen, I, you can't, I, I will talk about Taj Boyd all day, dog. Taj Boyd was different in high school. I watched him, I watched him put 45 on a team that everybody said was going to not let anybody put three on him, okay? Who's that other guy that used to play for you guys? The baseball player. Um, Ah, I can't think of his name. Okay. He was between he was between Boyd and Watkins uh, and Watson. Um, uh, you mean oh, uh, Kelly Bryant? No, not no, Kelly no, Bryant. no, no, no. That was after Watson. Yeah, he was he was he was after. Yeah, he's in between. Parker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he plays it like, because he, he didn't. He only got like. I mean, he was just kind of like K Boogie. He got like a couple games before they transitioned. I think over. he got. He, I think he got his his junior year. And he went pro. He went to the MLB, but yeah. uh. Either way, man, like, once you hit that back foot, man, and your hitch, like, you got to be you gotta, ready to make yeah, decisions. That ball's got to be out, yeah. He just – Yeah. He holds on to this. I mean, it's not even like he holds on to the ball, but, like, this this whole fucking thing was – And you can't blame – you can't blame the running back on that. He checks. There's no there's no work, and then he releases, and then the work well, comes. Dabble so did. I'm just saying Dabo did. So, well, I, I, mean, I mean, bro, like, your receiver has a step – Ball's got to be out right now. Yeah, Dabo's finished anyway. <laughs> See, honestly, the thing is, Mafa's not even fucking looking for it, dude. That's where the perfect the protection is to the left. Yeah, no, that's my thing. It's like they're worried about this these two guys right here the whole time. And yeah, he ends up come the 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 second guy ends up coming, but oh no, he's coming. Yeah, up. he's coming the whole time. I'm just saying, like the whole time, this is where the the focus of the the line was just in general. They thought but this the dude was coming. Yeah, no, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying, this is what they were worried about. So they got most of this protection, but they thought this dude was coming. And when he didn't come, that's when you could tell Moffa checks. When he sees this dude sitting, he just makes the decision. He's like, "Oh no, I'm going." And I mean, that's they just miss him. I mean, that's it. That's, I mean, that's he's it. got two open guys. Two open guys. Yeah, it, bro, pull the trigger, man. Come on, Texas. Gunsling that shit. And worst comes to worst, don't let it go. <laughs> Hold on to the ball. Well, I mean, listen, you can't blame him for letting go of this, dude. He, he got, got freaking, absolutely he rocked. Got molly wops. That is textbook and, right there. And he put, it, he put his helmet right on the ball. I mean, he I mean it's he, textbook. Yeah, he, I mean, that was look, textbook. We just sat yeah. here and dissected <laughs> Clemson, but let's be real. That's just a great defensive play, too. Yeah, great defensive play calling against – I mean – the best defensive play call versus that that play in that moment, and also I just want to I I want to throw this out our guard that guard that like should have been there number seventy seven isn't our starter he's our backup. I Not mean that it would really want to change a day, but he tries to pass off the blitz and linebacker to the center. It just it wasn't smooth. The, uh, the protection wasn't there. I mean it wasn't bad. He just he uh no one saw that corner. Just no one saw yeah. that corner blitz, and because of that. No one picks it up. I mean, Look it's, out. it's simple. Feed Look at that man, man bro. <laughs> Yo, he runs. So, it makes me so mad. He runs so well, and we just don't let him run the ball in clutch situations. He, I saw, I saw that like his rushing touchdown in this game was his first of the season. Like, what have you been doing? Throwing it to him. That's. I mean, if you want to know what we do, we throw it to him. That's really it. He, all his touchdowns are receiving touchdowns. Are you doing that man a disservice? Yeah, I mean, you are. Kind of. I mean, at least we give him the ball and let him score touchdowns. You know? Dude, at this moment right here, this sack, this sack right here, I was so hyped. I oh, you thought so you guys hyped. were coming back. I thought it was it. I thought it was it. I thought that was – I was like, no, we did it. And then we just – Look at that. What? Look at that catch. Yeah, that was a What a catch. catch, bro. Johnny Wilson. I'm going back to the That's sack, a 6'7 guy. Oh, shit, never mind. Plucking that off the ground. Yeah, that was a great catch. That was a great throw too. Let's be oh, real. Excellent throw. George yeah. Travis is going in the first round this year. You heard it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> he'll be a long line of QB mistakes. I I'm not saying he's going to be a great pro, but he's going first round. Okay. He's going to go first. I agree with that. I say. I, I mean, yeah. uh, the seasons. There's some. Yeah. There's some kids. This box management was so retarded, bro. Like, yeah. Why is they the whole just, team standing around? That's what I'm saying. Like, and then they pulled the a fucking absolute ugly. fucking dagger. And look, look that's at the my game. boy. <laughs> look at my boy, Keon Coleman. 
And it wasn't, it's not even like it was terrible defense or anything. Like, it was literally he just... just he just him. fucking lost him, dude. Like, uh, it's not even like he, I could be fucking mad. It's like, the 10 was there. I mean, the only thing I can be mad about is crack is whack and white don't cover black. I mean, that's it. I mean, I mean come on. Has nobody seen Remember the Titans? <laughs> <laughs> Take it back, take it back one more time. I just want to see one thing. A little bit further. Yeah, what's up? So I don't find where it's at here. Today. Bro, we need a clicker for this shit. I wish. I don't think you can do it for YouTube videos, though. That's kind of why I said I wish. Yeah. What are you looking for, Jay Sean? Yeah. I was just looking at where the safety was. I mean, I just, I think this is the the, the play as it was called. I'm not. The safety was coming, but you know. I mean, it did. run it back. Run it back. I just want to see where the ball is snapped. Where, where's the ball? Okay. So look, he's getting depth. He's getting depth at the snap. Yeah. Yeah, I really. I mean, honestly, like the defense wasn't even max bad. protect. That's a mass. Yeah. yeah. Some I, max protect. I don't know. Hold on. Two I don't, man route. I don't even think that's max protect, is it? I think no. Nah, that's not max protect. No, nah, it was just early in the play call. Or early in the play run. They sent everybody. <laughs> they they have they they sent five. I didn't win out. They sent five receivers. But everything checked. Okay. I mean, everything's decent. I mean, literally, Keon Coleman nil'd his way to a moss. I mean, the transfer the transfer portal. Who knew that the that Florida State was picking up Randy Moss? I mean, I could have told you that, bro. I don't know why Clemson didn't go after him. I really don't. Because ever since fucking T. Higgins and Hunter Renfro left, y'all have struggled at receiver, especially 50-50 yeah. balls. Well, I, I think we had – I mean, in Gato, like the past couple years we've had some decent receivers. I just think do we – DJ Uyungle, just like the offense that we were trying to run in him, I just don't think they worked together, and that was a lot of our problems. Yeah. I, honestly, like I, we did have some good wide receivers. You know how it be. All right. Well, I mean, after that, really all there is to watch is is that fourth down play. So let's let's watch him get lost one more time. And Riley, I know this shit pissed you off. This throw pissed you off, didn't it? That shit hurt, dog. It didn't piss me off. It broke my heart. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he got That's soft. unfortunate. I mean, he got fucking just. I mean, like yeah. beautiful yeah. throw, great catch. Can't do anything about oh, it. Wow. And then this play yeah. call. <sighs> Fourth and two. A terrible throw. The first time we targeted Bo Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but I mean, I I don't think they're gonna show it. But the play before Riley, we talked about it before. Yeah, they don't show it. It's not on here. I tried and I tried to find it. No one has it. Only on the third and one, bro. You cannot throw a bubble screen into the boundary. That's Garrett Riley getting cute, yeah. and that's what I said when y'all hired him. He gets cute, not just Garrett, but his brother Lincoln. You know, like yeah. they just get cute in crucial situations. Bro, Will Shipley is eating against that defense. It's third and one. Just give him the ball, man. Yeah, I mean, but honestly. But instead of yeah. bubble screen into the boundary, it gets blown up, and then it's fourth and two, and then it's a do-or-die play, and you throw a shitty-ass slant route. Yeah. Like, our <laughs> O-line, even with a, a backup guard, like, they were, they were fucking holding their own all day. I mean, we were getting those short gains all day, all day, and we just boom, fucking yeah. Let's run a bubble screen on third and one, and then throw a slant on fourth and two. That, that, that that's how we should do this. <laughs> uh, that third and one. You know what I wanted on third and one? This is what I was saying yeah. while I was sitting there watching the game. I just I I don't mind the throw. I wanted a play action. I wanted a okay. hard play action shot. Yeah. That's that's really what in my heart of hearts. I was like, just fucking act like we're about to feed Shipley straight up the middle and fucking chuck one deep. 
I, I was I would have been happy with that. But no, we gotta run a fucking double motion fucking uh wide receiver screen. <laughs> Inspector Gadget. Da 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 True. Alright. Well, that's fucking that's all I have to say for that. Unfortunately, yeah, we're having man. some technical difficulties with Jay Sean the Dawn on the end of this one. But uh yep. you know, we got to have all the breakdown that we really needed. So yeah, man. for us here at the TTT, we want you guys to uh well one, we appreciate you for tuning in this far into the episode. But uh yes. while you're here, please like, drop a comment, subscribe, subscribe. Right there, all that yeah. all that great stuff and uh we're we're gonna clean up and get it out of here, y'all. Peace. Thank you.